So the final um, concept we're going to consider in uh, this little set of videos is more on processes with Python. So more on process is another type of evolutionary process, but instead of having an infinite number of players, an infinite population, we have a finite population. And so our, um, our population is made up of individuals of given types. And every individual plays against every other individual and they play a game. So we're going to do a model with a two by two game. So every individual represents one of two strategies. And after they've played everyone, um, that is gives everyone their score. So how well they've done overall by playing every other type gives them their score. And then that score is used to form the probabilities with which we select a given individual to be reproduced. So if they've done better, there's a higher chance that they get selected. However, um, when we reproduce an individual from one generation to the next, we also need to eliminate another one. Um, the elimination is also done randomly, but it's done completely randomly. So it doesn't matter how well someone performed. They're, they're still going to get um, they have the, as, as much of a chance of being eliminated. And that goes on from generation to generation, everyone playing everyone else. The, the, the scores will change over time because there might be more of a particular type of individual against which an individual does better or worse. Um, and we have this random process where someone is selected to be reproduced and someone is selected to be eliminated. And after a certain amount of time, they will, with non-zero probability, end up with there being only one type left in the population. And that's when the Moron process ends. And so here's some code for this here written in, in Python. So big N here is the number of individuals. So this the the uh, how many individuals are in our population. Game is the particular game we're playing. And the code here written is for a two by two game. So representing when there's two strategies. And I equals one means how many individuals of the first type are in our population at the start. And then we have a C just to make sure everything's reproducible. So we start out here by creating our population. And so we create uh, a zero represents an individual of the first type. And so we have I of them. And then we have N minus I ones, which represents individual of the second type. And then we count our population. So we have uh, this vector, which is this is the count that's the number of zeros. So first time around, there'll be i of them. And then there'll be n minus i ones. And so this will be our vector that we're interested in. We set the seed. And then here, uh, set takes our list of our population, which has a number of zeros, a number of ones, turns it into a set. So there's no repetition. It's either all zeros, all ones, or zero and one. And so as long as there's two elements in this set, in other words, it's not just all zeros or ones, we keep on doing this. Now this part of uh, the code here is um, essentially getting every player to play every other player. And game is just going to be a two by two array. So here when we do player comma opponent, um, if player is a zero and opponent is a zero, then we just get the score of um, uh, a zero against a zero. But if a player is a zero and opponent is a one, we get the score of a zero against a one and, and so on. Here we take the calculate the total scores so that probabilities gives us um, a probability where we take score and divide it by total score. And now here we get the index so the the, the position of the individual that we're going to uh, reproduce um, just by using a weighted random choice weighted by these these probabilities. And then we choose a random index completely randomly. And then we say, okay, the po position in the population of uh, the index that we're going to eliminate, replace it with the index of the position we're going to reproduce. And just append that to the counts and return the counts. So if we, uh, if we run this, and then as an example, if I set n to be 8, we're going to have 8 individuals in our population. And now let's build ourselves a game. And the game we're going to consider is one where if an individual of a particular type meets another individual of that same type, they'll get a four. But if they meet the other type, they get a one. So they do four times better when they meet someone of the same type as them. And uh, that's for the same for the second type. And now we're going to get our counts just by using this function we've, we've built there. So n equals n, game equals a, and we'll go with the default so that i equals, equals one. And let's take a look at, at those counts. And so we see what happens. We have this population where we had one individual 
of the first type and seven of the second type. And that's stayed the same uh, from, in, from generation to generation, which indicates that what's happening is that the uh, individuals of the second type were being chosen to reproduce, but they were also be, uh, an individual of the second type was also being chosen to be eliminated. So nothing happened. And then all of a sudden we did choose uh, an individual of the first type to be eliminated. And that's not a terribly great way to, to see that. So we'll just use matplotlib to, to plot it. And there we go, that's, that's just a plot of what we just saw. I happen to know that there's a given seed where something else happens, because essentially this is a random process every time. And there is one particular random process, well there's quite a few obviously, um, but here's one of the more rare random processes where we see this one individual of the first type has actually managed to take over the population and, and kill off the individuals of the, of the second type. And so we, we, we say that they have managed to, to fixate. Um, and that's how you would simulate these modern processes. There's also various uh, analytical formulas and theorems that we can get about the fixation probabilities and things like that, which can all be verified using um, these lines of code here.